Howdy YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So this video here is part two on the full custom respray on this WRX. So insane color this is going and we're up to getting the door jams done. So in the first video we did the body repairs, we got it all primed up, we blocked it back and basically I've got the panels all straight at this point. I then scuffed all the door jams. I did also get the panels sanded down with like 320 grit um, so that they're just going to need a final sand over once we get the jams all done. So I decided to give you guys a quick look at this just to remind you that uh, before you go and spray any flakes through your primer gun just give it a good clean out so that you don't have any chunks of primer in there so that's why I gave it a bit of a soak in some thinners just to dislodge any um, old bits of primer so that I can give them a good brush out before I do go and put any flakes through there. So we're just going to be smashing through the job. We're not going to be hanging on any one uh, part of the procedure for too long. Just give you guys a quick look at each part of the procedure and do my best to narrate through the videos. And um, yeah, so obviously got all the masking done and gave it a good prep sole down and gave it a good tack rag and what I'm doing here is some um, wet on wet primer so this helps with adhesion and it seals it all down it also makes it all one color which helps with the coverage of the next stage which is going to be black so most of this car got painted with PPG so that's just because that's what I was using at the shop um, and as you can see here D789 that is the base coat black and we're putting D807 so that's a one-to-one -one mix and I must say like I actually quite like the um, PPG solvent based range I think it sprays nice it's quite user friendly um, I, I think I actually like it much more than the uh, PPG water but either way it's like a nice strong black this one it's the the strongest black they got like it's not overly yellow or anything it's yeah probably more on the bluer side which is what you want, like a true black. So as you saw, I just smashed that, a couple of coats of that black down until we got coverage. And then now we're mixing up the flakes. So as you can see there, it's the Hollywood Flakes. That's just a brand that actually Spray Guns Direct, they made this brand up themselves. And if you missed it, it's a 0 0.15 silver flake. So it's a big flake. It's probably not the biggest flake I've ever seen. I've seen the Absolute Monster Flakes. I sprayed them years ago when I was doing the DNA custom paints training course so we did a bit of a mural I probably still got a video on that if you want to go back and check through my old videos but <laughs> I can I can hear myself just going woohoo like the first time you spray flakes in a booth it's uh yeah it's pretty funny just seeing those flakes just go all over the place but there's one little bit of advice that I could give you guys if you ever do uh take on a job like this and that's um I didn't know that it happened, so like I'd never done a job this size, uh, definitely in flakes. It, it had always been, I don't know, like little murals or little bits of art or, you know, like uh, even like helmets, motorbike tanks, those kind of things. Um, I had never done like a full respray. So as it turns out, what ends up happening when you're spraying flakes is they end up stacking on top of each other. It's like your own overspray stacks on top of the other flakes we have already sprayed. So uh, you could put like 20 coats of clear and, and you're never going to fill those ones up that have stacked. Um, I didn't know that at the time and like how would you know? You know what I mean? Like, um, like yeah, you, you wouldn't know until you found it out sort of the hard way. And even after doing, doing the job, I, like, I, I still hadn't even thought of any way of like I could have done it different but it, what some people have been saying in the comments is that you can get like an airline and start to blow it off and that might help get rid of some of them and someone even said there's like um, a 3M product called TAC pad so not TAC rags he said and I did type into Google and there is a product called 3M TAC pads he said go over it with a 3M TAC pad which I think it's kind of like a um, a little bit of ultra fine scotch bright. That's what it looks like anyway, and a uh, high pressure air blower. And supposedly that that helps. So I'll be trying that next time. Um, but yeah, so what ends up happening is when you sand it down to do your flow coat, you end up peeking through to a couple, 
Um, it's something that for the door jams, you could barely even notice it. Um, there's like one or two here and there. Um, when I was doing the outside, you could notice it a little bit more. Um, so all I did was just throw an extra coat of candy down. And the way I say it, like that's not a bad thing to throw an extra couple of coats of candy down because one thing that I do know about candy is that it fades over time. Like uh, when you leave it out in the sun, it doesn't have a good UV resistance. Um, because from what I know, like candy is, um, it's, it's a dye, right? So it's not a pigment. So think about like your shirts um, and things like, you know, your clothes. They, they have dyes in them and, and dyes don't last forever. That's why your shirts fade. Um, so especially reds and reds actually are the worst for it. So the way I say it is having a couple of extra coats of candy is not a bad thing. You know what I mean? So the funniest thing about that is that supposedly there was a few neck beards over on Spray Painters Australia which were like hanging it on me because I cut through to um, a couple of little silver flakes um, and they're like, oh, what an idiot. And it's like, what, did you know that? For starters. And it's like, it turned out to be a good thing anyway, man. It's like, I don't know. If, if you're going to look at this job here and pick on me as a spray painter, Man, you picked the wrong job. This is like the best respray. Like this is the easily the best respray I've ever done, if not the best paint job I've ever done. So I think you, <laughs> I think you picked the wrong job to try and you know discredit me on. Like good luck, mate. Better luck next time. Um, but yeah, so as you can see there, so I actually mixed the candy with two pack clear coat, um, and I think I did three coats because. I was going at like 10% candy, so I did a couple of test panels when I painted this job, uh, before I painted this job, sorry, and I found that sort of more is better with the candy anyway, so I, I started right down low, which like the same type thing uh, from when I was doing the 46V resprays, um, and, and the 46V resprays that we do they take um, like 3% candy. So for every liter, you just put 30 grams of that candy in. Whereas this, 3%, it's nothing. You just, you've got to put like 20 coats on before you actually get that nice deep red that you're looking for. So I went all the way up to 10%. I found that was much better and uh, three coats. It, and, and the thing about candies is like, you're never going to get coverage. So af anything after three coats, doesn't change the color. So what I was saying before about me having to put a little, uh, a couple of extra coats down, it's not going to change the color from the color that we agreed upon anyway. So it's not like the customer is going to be like, oh no, like that's a darker candy than I wanted. So he was after it. He wanted that dirty look anyway, which is why we put the black down. Um, so as you can see, what we did there, um, we gave it a good sand down. I actually started with 500 grit, I then went 800 grit, and then those 1000 grit grippy pads. Um, but what I've been doing is in between every single coat is baking it. So um, I don't think I baked it between the wet on wet and the base coat, but yeah, uh, between every single coat of clear, I'd been giving it a 10 minute bake. So I was just using standard reducer. I didn't go for fast. I don't know, I've just found that the medium reducer seems to get a touch more flow. Like you don't really get much flow at all with most of the PPG clears. I'm actually back working with Standox now and I do much prefer their clears. But the clear that you saw me spray just here for the final clear is my favorite PPG clear, which is the 105. So it's a higher gloss and it does go on a lot glassier. It, it dries nice and fast. And yeah, I found that a lot better than the 136, but the 136 is nice and thick. That's why I decided to use that to fill up the flakes there. So that's it for the um, insides there. So yeah, pretty cool looking color there. You might have noticed like one or two of those little silver spots, but um, yeah, that's about it for this video, guys. Hope you have enjoyed. But yeah, as always, if you think that there's anything that I could have done better, I'm always all ears. I'm on a journey in this life. I'm trying to get better every single day as a person and as a painter. So always open to any criticism as long as it's constructive. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up and I hope to get another one of these in this series up soon. It's been a bit of a delay because I have been quite busy working on my own Tirana.
I'd like to say a big thanks to everyone for watching and if you'd like to support the channel further you're more than welcome to go over and check out some of the merchandise we've got. My personal favourite is those spray suits so they're a good quality collab branded spray suit with a gunman logo on it. There's also hats, drink coolers, hoodies and t-shirts so be sure to go over and check out the link in the description if you are interested.